My name is Precious Nyarambi. I'm an African woman. I'm a young woman. Africa is my home. Africa is my pride. I am happy to have an identity of an African. I take it with such honor, with such privilege to be African. It is a blessing. I work with women from previously marginalized backgrounds, economic refugees, victims of rape, women that are not educated. Why? I grew up as an orphan. My parents divorced when I was a year old. I never got a chance to experience my mother's love as long as I remember. And when she left, she was left without a choice. She had no support. She had no structure. She had no job to be able to take care of us. And for a long time, I wondered why she left me as a young child. And as I grew older, I had to own up to my own story. And the story was that sometimes women go through so much pain, rejection, abuse, and sometimes it's easier to judge from a distance without understanding. And when you get a little bit closer, you understand that maybe what she needed was love, was an opportunity to pursue something that makes her happy, to pursue something that can give her a reputable livelihood. So as I grew older, after my parents had died when I was very young, life wasn't easy. Things were so difficult. Going to school was a nightmare. Coming back home to a home without parents, growing up in a child-headed home, it was not easy. And when I went through all this, I didn't know that there, there was a calling in the making. I found purpose in the challenges. I found purpose, I found calling in the trials that I was facing daily. The trials were making me. The trials are still making me. And in that making, I developed compassion for orphaned children like myself. I developed compassion for women that I meet on a day-to-day -day basis. I made it a point to hear their story, to sit down with them and see how I can be relevant. And when I do this, it's not because I have arrived or I know it all, but that if I have an opportunity to empower the next woman, if I, if I have an opportunity to empower another woman, let me hold their hands. Let us grow together. If I have an opportunity to light someone else's candle, let me do that. In me doing that, others are also lighting my own candle. I know most times when people look at Africa, they see challenges, they see problems, but in the problems lies opportunities. For us as women, especially in this dispensation, for us as Africans, and as we begin to unravel the challenges, as we begin to unravel the problems, there lies opportunities for us. And in, by in doing so, we are lighting someone's candle. We are improving someone's life. We are giving exposure to someone's life that they needed. And they can begin to work on their own. And it brings me so much joy to change a life one day at a time. You might wonder how do I do that? As an organization, we have a foundation that works actively with vulnerable children, with children that do not have school fees, children that are on the streets. 
We help them through hygiene packs. We help them with school hampers when we can. We are in the process of setting up a foundation, a library for our foundation, where we are taking the children from off the streets and making them have a home where they can read, where they can be counseled, where they can be taught. And we believe that that is going to be impactful in changing lives of many children in the job at CBD. We work with women on empowerment issues because we believe that we cannot give women donations continuously, but we can empower them and sharpen their skills. So we train them on different skills, we then absorb them through our training company that offers commercial, residential and industrial cleaning services. And we have been able to place a lot of women on jobs. Why? Because donations have a way of crippling people. But when you empower a person, when you change their mindset, you have changed them for good. So when we give them jobs, we have improved and sustained their livelihood, which I feel ties in with some of the UN SDG goals. And it is a privilege, it is a wonder when we see women evolving to their fullest potential after giving them a nudge to pursue who they can ultimately become. And so, what am I saying? My point here today is that in each challenge that we face on a day-to-day -day basis, when it frustrates you enough, you can be able to come up with a solution. I believe that the universe, oh God, has given you grace enough to overcome. So I own my story of growing up in a child-headed home. I own my story of being a young woman in Africa. And I look at those situations and I refuse to become a victim of it. I want to become a victor. And when I become a victor, I make other people shine in the process. And some of the key things that I've learned along the journey has been to collaborate with other women that are doing noble things, collaborate with other people, and come out with something that is strategic, that is good. I've learned to do synergies with a lot of other people. We have actively trained women and men, for that matter, in South Africa and Zimbabwe at lunch, through business accelerators mostly. We have been able to develop relationships that are strategic, that are key, that are actually opening doors for us in the long run. We have been able to be consistent with our story and to own our story of transformational empowerment. We have been able to prepare ourselves individually and also as an organization. Preparation is key. And um, our underlying belief system is that of faith. We believe that if the heart can conceive it and we believe it in our heart, we can be able to achieve what we are supposed to achieve and what we set our goals to do and accomplish. It is of paramount importance that as a people, we purpose in our hearts to do beyond. Why? Because the whole world is waiting for individual selves of us to manifest to our fullest potential. And we have it on the inside of us. I challenge each one of us to rise above mediocrity, to rise above um, the challenges, to rise above being victims and telling ourselves that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us for that matter. African woman African child, it is possible when we unite our hearts, when we unite our efforts, we are able to do the impossible. We are able to rebuild our African continent. We are able to rebuild our communities. When you empower a woman, you have empowered a community. We are capable of loving one another beyond geography. We are able to love one another beyond race and age. Women, we are capable. Women, we can. And I want to challenge each one of us that can we do more? 
Can we love more? Can we be relevant more? Can we light other people's candles? I thank you so much for this opportunity. I don't take it for granted. And I pray that the work and the motive and the agenda of this whole initiatives will go beyond expectation and imagination. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Precious Nyarabi, the founder of Vessels of Virtue, an organization that is actively empowering women holistically, changing your life one day at a time. God bless you. Thank you.